we're back. Uh, I know it's not perfect, but these are running repairs to stop fish being bumped off. So we have found some lighter elastic. And so what I've decided to do is, that's the original, I didn't realize it was this thick. This is carp elastic, which is probably explains a lot of the misses, although Andy did miss quite a few legitimately. Dropped a few catches, so to speak. So now we've got some, we've got some movement in the tip there, um, which will help stop bumping little fish off. So we're gonna get on and get some more and hopefully this will make a big difference. Running repairs. We'll make the best of what we've got. I think we'll be fine now. It's gonna stand far less chance of bumping anything off. Back to Yellow Maggot. We haven't had one for everybody on the Yellow Maggot yet. Although we've had one. And we'll be back on the ball. That's a white. There's no yellow, sir. The yellow one is next to the white. <laughs> for everybody on Black and TV, the yellow one is next to the red one. <laughs> Davison, wasn't it? No, it, it was uh, it was snooker. It was so snooker when those yeah. watching in black. It wasn't and white. John Virgo, but it was. Yeah, those yeah. watching in black and white. Yeah. The red ball is behind the blue. Or behind the brown. Yeah, behind the blue, behind the brown, whatever it was. Yeah, red and brown. I think probably look almost the same on a black and white. Okay, we're off and running. Whirling around. I know we had a few minutes off while we were. Oh, this, yeah, they're still there. So you might have to lift and mend a few times. Look, oh, there you go. We're in. Right, this is the test of it. This is the acid test because this is a smaller fish. And let's hope that Andy doesn't bump it. Oh, he's, he's getting smoother. I think he's, he's getting fed off, fed up with the fact that he's bumped a few <laughs> I don't know how you got the got the elastic wrapped around the tip somehow. I don't know whether the elastic was being very effective then, to be honest, because it's, it he's got it wrapped around the tip. Sack the angler. Sack the angler. Look, look, oh dear, look. Oh, I don't know. Let, oh, what can you say? Oh, nice. All right. Yeah, he's away. This time we haven't got that new elastic tied around the top of the pole. We? We. Did I hear we? Yeah. How did that one work? It's called delegation of responsibility. Oh, I'm sure it is. If you can't blame somebody else, at least try to spread the blame. Keep everybody happy. <laughs> well, you sort of spread the blame a bit. As I it? say, spread the blame, keep everybody happy. You can't admit the incompetence is entirely down to yourself. <laughs> Oh look, you're in, you're in. Come on, you've got to chopping these reactions up. Chopping these reactions up, what you like. There you go. So the elastic is actually doing its job on the tip now and it's sort of saving the fish from bumping around too much. So it's a classic example of how to avoid bumping a fish off on the fly. As in, you've just had to adapt, but we've got the job done and we've got a solution to the problem that we had. Another nice little roach. Yeah, he's away. Nobody seems to be too fussy about what colour maggot. No, no, which is which is a bonus. Watch, 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 you've got something. Go on. Oh, that's a bit better. That's a bit better, and it has put a stretch in that elastic. So that's three in a row without any bump off, so that solution's definitely worked, hasn't it? Definitely. There we go. That's a key thing to have the right elastic for the size of fish that you're catching, isn't it? Proves the point. Look, look down and see where the hook is. Well, if I hold that for you right now, now you can demonstrate it properly. Well, only two, two, two is enough, more than enough. And you've got to get it in the slot and then slide it down the slot. There you go. <laughs> that 
that works. There you go, a bit bigger. Yeah. yeah, you can sit and catch those all day. Nice little rod. And then back in the game. Well, I got caught a little by surprise here because Andy decided that he was going to go to a place where we hadn't put any bait in. And if he doesn't muck it up, it's going to be his biggest fish of the day. It's a nice golden rod. Beautiful coloration. So they're getting bigger, which means the, the smaller fish are probably. Well, only twice, that's it. Yeah, and you've got to go through that, through that slot and then through that one. That's it. Yeah. There you go. It makes it so much easier, but that's a, that's a nice fish. Don't drop him, whatever you do. Yeah, that's a lovely golden rud. Beautiful, beautiful colours. What can you say? Excellent. Yeah. He did lose a bigger one earlier, but hey, you know, there's probably going to be even bigger ones, which would be... Now that the, there's always, always an, an adage, if you can feed yourself through the small ones, feed them off, the bigger ones are there, they'll move in. You know, they don't get fed off half as quickly. So uh, maybe that's starting to happen. But those little ones, they don't have to take some bait up. Check it bait. Well, I mean, you can search around. Obviously, the bigger fish are still about. So, you know, it's not going to do any harm just to search around. I mean, there's, there's food all over the place for them. So maybe some of the bigger fish are hiding. Well, they're hiding. They're holding back, as we would say, which they often do and move in later, you know, just like carp would when you're fishing the margins. Your float's gone. Your float went completely then and you've been done. Oh, did you see that? I think the camera might have got that. He got completely done then. <laughs> completely robbed. Do you know? Oh, unfortunately there's a drop off. You were probably a little bit light on the lift, you know, but, you know, we had three in a row, so, you know, and the fish are still there. One thing I was going to say to everybody uh, who's watching is, um, if you want to negate, negate the uh, weight of a light hook, so size 20 or something like that, one thing that you can do is Yes, I know it's maggot drowning and I know it's probably nasty, but look, if you tip your maggots into water like that, what they will do, after a few minutes, they will take a breath of air because they're frightened of getting drowned. And now, that gives them more buoyancy, which negates the weight of a hook. So that might be worth a consideration. Especially if you're fishing you know, um, for, for fish on the surface like we are for rudd really, we're only sort of 18 inches deep. That's a consideration um, because it does work. You're a bit limited with a pole from a point of view of um, choosing you know, I mean, say we wanted to change tactics on a float, we could just hit the middle of the lake, put a big float on, whack it in the middle of the lake, see what's out there. You know, you have got more flexibility on a float, but you've got more accuracy on a pole. You know, you put your bait over the top, we don't need a catapult because we're fishing close in. But, um, but you know, you put your bait over the top and uh, you're super accurate, aren't you? You know, at the end of the day. There we go, he's in again, so well, it's, just, it's just, well, I'm not surprised, but that's a roach. So, um, again, the elastic's doing its job, it's got a little bit of stretch in it, just enough to stop bumping the fish off. It's certainly cut down the loss rate, we've only lost one since we put the blue elastic on. Well, we, no, he only lost one. <laughs> uh. There 
we go. Fish, fish hooked safely out, fish ready to go back in. Barbless hooks, obviously. Um, they do have their merits because you don't pull fish out with their mouths missing big scars and hair lips and various other things, but of course you have to be mindful of keeping a tight line, otherwise a hook will get slung very quickly. Well, I'll tell you what, Casper was in the other day and he was talking about some lake he'd been fishing, not mentioning any names. Ah. He goes, and the carp there, he goes, you're catching carp, but I haven't got any lips hardly. I know where he's talking, yep. Yeah. I know so exactly. Hard, yeah. You've got carp out there, so hardly any lips. Captive audience and poor things they've got to eat, so they have to risk getting caught, and of course... Well, this is, you're catching fish every cast. Yeah. So you're catching fish almost every cast, but they're absolutely rubbish condition, you know. He says, I think any most or anything, so people keep catching. I think any lake owner worth his salt, when, you know, should be saying to the people who are fishing the lakes, this is my opinion if I owned a lake, which unfortunately I can't afford to, but I would love to, um, would be when you catch a fish that's in pr pretty bad condition, retain it, Call us, we'll go and have a look and then put it in a retirement pool where it can live the rest of its days unharried. Well, what he was saying they're doing a couple of lakes he fishes in Poland is certain fish, obviously not specimen fish, yeah. if you catch them, you can then go up and wade, buy them and take them. Well, straight away, look at that. <laughs> oh, unfortunate. And he dropped it off. He did. You know why? Because as he bit, I actually lifted and I, did, I didn't put enough into it. Cause I don't know. Yeah, Who said ducks can't fly? Absolutely. See? You know, we'll assume that I've landed them. That's how quick you can catch them. Have you got me worm? There you go. You've got it. There you go. Okay. Got him. You want to drop him back in? Yep. And away. Nice perch. Got him? Yep. It's just come up, just come up to half past seven. Absolutely quiet, peaceful, most chilled out spots I've ever found. The sun beating through the trees, just put a little bit of gold on the water. Nice one, that. Yeah. Last knockings. 
Nice tench, beautiful. So, yeah. There you go. Oh. Sliding back in. Sliding back in. Yeah. Nice and gentle. There we go. Right, well, I think that's about it for the day now. So, there you go. All good. All right, last knockings. I thought that we might see another one. The tench are feeding madly. Oh. Hook's popped Looking out, which is there. nice. So there's another one. Look, for the, look up. There you go. So we've got another one. And that's a nice little fish. There we go. Get that one back safely into the water. We're losing the light. Um, the tench are feeding like mad. If you see the bubbles out there, uh, unfortunately, we haven't got enough light, but it's took a long time to get their heads down and get them feeding, but we've had perch, bream, tench, rud, and roach, and probably had 25 fish. So it's been a really good session, really enjoyable. Love to be fishing here later. The fish have been rising and jumping around the lake. Very little air movement. It's not stifling hot, it's just right. The fish are coming out, they're feeling cool, so they're not under a lot of duress, which is great. It's just like uh, cool tap water, so uh, it's all good. So we're done for the day. Down at Muddyford Wood.